Good evening. Time to begin our services here at Commissary. Proud to see everyone. We're glad that those that are watching on Facebook are with us. The announcements I have are virtually the same as this morning. Got a couple more details. And if anyone has anything else to add, feel free to do so. Our sympathy goes out to the family of Vera Phillips, who's a member of the Union Cent Central Congregation who passed away this past week. Julie Lloyd has a heart or a CT scan schedule for Monday. Corey Rose surgery to reattach the tendon in his hand went great and he is back at home. Don Oreck needs someone who can sit with him for the next few weeks. And if you or someone you know can do this type of work, please contact one of the elders. No lifting should be required. Greg McLean's mother was hospitalized overnight last week for chest pains and some tests have already been run and more are expected and that is a friend of Daniel Wilkerson. Next Sunday, we'll be honoring our five high school seniors during the morning worship service. They are Lucy Horton, Ariston King, Cash McElvoy, Abby Nicely, and Mallory Oden. Linda's dad, Aaron Morris, is still in the hospital, although he's doing somewhat better. We'll have a potluck supper next Sunday following our evening service. And the CRA chorus will be here during our Wednesday evening service on April 10. I talked to Ken Burrow just a few minutes ago, and he said, let you all know that his tumor is shrinking. The treatments are helping. He said it's not gone, but it's much, much better. And as for the low sodium, I asked him exactly what, you know, how we needed to do that. And he said, if you fix a meal for them, just don't add any salt whatsoever. Just, just don't add salt. And he said they can then... Uh, do it, you know, just ever how little that they need to do. I didn't remind you all to silence your electronic devices. I was actually going to do this backwards, but I should have said that first. Anyway, so if you have an electronic device, you might want to shut that down so it won't disturb us. Also, remember our services. We've talked about what we're going to do a little bit differently next Sunday. Our Services will be as normal, classes at 9.30 and a worship service at 10.05, then Sunday evening at 5.30 and, of course, Wednesday night at 7. But we will be honoring our seniors next week, and then we'll also have a potluck. Is there anything else? Anybody have any other updates, anything whatsoever that... I can't do... Okay. Judy Latham is still in UAMS. Either had a stroke or a seizure or something and put her there. Okay. Sure All right. She's waiting on a place. She's going to have to have more care than what they've been giving her to talk. Okay. For a place to come over where they can put her in. Okay. All right. Need to keep her in our prayers. And this. Um, Don Oreck, it said, please contact one of our elders, and they can give you more details on what is needed there and what the hours would be <coughs> and such. Is there anything else? Anything else that anybody else has? If not, those that are participating in our services tonight, Wes will be leading our singing. Art will be our speaker. Our closing prayer will be Mike Smith, and our opening will be Charlie Rowe. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we're indeed thankful for this day and the blessings of it. Privilege we've enjoyed to assemble this morning and worship you and have communion and, and have fellowship. Our Father, we are mindful now of those that have been mentioned this evening that are sick and have lost loved ones, and we ask your blessings upon them. Pray that you'd give them comfort. Give those that need your healing. We pray that they would soon be restored to their to their health again. <coughs> Our Father, we're thankful for those that preach your word here at Commissary and throughout the community and, and throughout the world. And we ask a special blessing, Father, on those Christians that that we 
help and the support of in, in Haiti and in Africa. And we ask, Father, that, that life would be easier for them in the future. We pray for those Christians in Ukraine and in all the countries that have, that have problems where it's not easy to be a Christian. We ask your blessings upon them. Father, we pray that you would be with us this evening as we study your word, as we sing together. We pray, Father, that you would be with us when we leave this place, be with us throughout this week, and help us to, to live in a way and act in a way that, that our friends and neighbors and those around us can see you in the way we live. Our Father, we are most thankful for your Son and his love for us, his willingness to go to the cross in our place. We're so thankful for that. We pray, Father, that you would look down upon us and as we come repenting of our sins that you would forgive us and help us to, to do better and not sin as often. Continue to bless us. Forgive us when we fail you. In Jesus we pray. Amen.
another one? Yeah. Okay. 571 and we'll, we'll do one more. <coughs> 571. <laughs> Seeking the lost shed as godly and wanderers on the
151. This is that weird one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You walked right into it. Yes, for another one. <laughs> The as a bird to your mountain, thou who are weary of sin, go to the clear flowing fountain, where you may wash and be clean. Apply for the avenger is near thee. Call Oh, in the great healing. 
We'll be in Luke chapter 13 tonight, Luke the 13th chapter. As we continue looking at some passages in Luke that are not found in the other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John. And tonight I want us to look at uh, the first nine verses here in uh, Luke chapter 13, the only place in the Gospels that you find this account. Reading from the New American Standard, Bible, the scriptures say, Now on the same occasion there were some present who reported to him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were greater sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered this fate? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or do you suppose that those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them were worse culprits than all the men who lived in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he began telling this parable. Man had a fig tree which had been planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and did not find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, Behold, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? And he answered and said to him, Let it alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, cut it down. Luke chapter 13 verses 1 through 9. Jesus is traveling. We're not quite certain where he was, but as you read through Luke, especially the latter chapters, you see that he's headed toward Jerusalem where he'll be crucified. But the Bible says here that there were some that asked him 